Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ebro Lauren Rosenberg, Ebro in the morning. Uh, I think his name in the movie is Clarence, and I think the movie is about Clarence, but his real name is Lakeith Stansfield. Give it up one time. Yeah. Get Thank ready you. for that big Thank release you. this weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yo, um, I just want to say uh, from the trailer, I am super thankful that uh, yourself, all the people participating, Hove, and everybody put up money to make this happen, that we are making a black biblical film. Absolutely, yeah. It's an exciting time, man. You know, I, I read the script when I was doing The, the Heart of They Fall with James Samuel, and uh, when he gave it to me, the first thing I thought was like, damn, we get to see black skin in a time and space where we haven't been really represented. And I just thought it was a great opportunity to explore that, explore what it looked like, um, with the backdrop of this great story of this character, Clarence, who's this guy who probably lived down the street from Jesus, around the corner from Jesus, and was seeing all the things he was doing. It was like, I want a piece of that action. Like, I want to be, I want to be the man. You I know? told James Samuel, uh, you know, uh, when I saw the trailer, I was like, yo, so Clarence is like the first clout chaser? Yeah. That's what this is? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, bro was like, oh, he's popping. I'm going to do that. So that is really yeah. the theme of the, of the film to some degree? I think so. I think it's it's there's it's multi-layer metaphors, but I think uh, part of it is this idea that we want to feel like we're somebody in the world, and I think that's what drives people often to do things to get attention. The attention is is a lot of their you know, and a, a lot of the attention sort of um, it's like you know, it sort of supports the idea that I'm important in the world. And this is what he needed. This is what he wanted to bring his family from point A to point B to live a better life, to feel like he's somebody. And right now is doing a little dance on TikTok. And before it was proselytizing and, you know, uh, telling people about the new schools of thought and new ways of thinking. So he used the tools he had at the time to try to get what was necessary. Now, was it the right way to go? Um, that's the question. And he gets humbled and, and comes to a sense of redemption at the end of the movie. And that's why I thought it'd be a, a good story to tell. It also seems you. ironic for you that you just don't. You seem very anti-clout chasing mm -hmm. in what I've been able to gather from you. It's ironic that you're playing that character because I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, do you agree with the sentiment that one of the problems we sort of have societally is how much it's about likes and attention versus just actual quality and conversation? Absolutely. You know, I think the thing that I do identify with in Clarence is the idea that you have untapped potential that is not necessarily seen, but you know it inside, what you're capable of. Your potential um, is yet to be discovered, and you have a willingness to want to share in order to get the point mm -hmm. across, you know what I mean? So I understand that, and that was his journey, really. I think it was less really about clout, and it was more about his own personal feeling like, I'm a successful I person, I'm doing the thing that matters, I'm, I'm having an impact on the world. Mm -hmm. So once he was able to get that impact, he realized what came with that was a price that made him feel like, damn, what am I sacrificing as a result of doing this? And that made him make ultimately the right decision. And that's why I was really drawn into the character. It was a, when he came in an intersection to make the right choice, he made the right choice. Mm. And that made all the difference, despite the mistakes. So um, Tiana Taylor is Mary Magdalene? Yes. You're Clarence. Yeah. Um, Jesus makes an appearance, mm -hmm. um, I hear. Um <laughs> The uh, apostles make an appearance. Yeah. Like, it does actually dig into biblical stories as we know it, right? And uh, I guess as... As it's well, told, as, well, as we understand it. Absolutely. It's in the backdrop of it. So the backdrop is the biblical space that we sort of know and understand. And some of the characters pop up, but it really isn't centered around biblical stories. Got it. It's an imagination of a story of a man who lived in the biblical times. Right, right. So you see these people pop up, but really we're following the story of Clarence, who is mm. actually a non-believer at the beginning of the movie and uh, sort of finds his faith through his trials and tribulations. Have you heard... Has there been any blowback, right? Because we live in a very tumultuous time, right? Everything going on in the Middle East, literally going on. There's, you know, chaos and and evil going on in that region on planet Earth right now. Yeah. like And has been for a long time. We talk about it a lot on this program and how we feel politically about it. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you know, it's almost as if, you know, me as someone who was raised in a household with a Jewish mother and a black father... And I have, you know, Jewish family and Muslim family and Christian family and, you know, Pan like all these different. We've never 
been taught through the lens we know as modern understanding mm. to accept the fact that there were black, African, dark complected human beings in this region at that time. Yeah. The oldest Bible on earth is in Ethiopia, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Some of the oldest Christian practices on earth are in Ethiopia, in Africa. Absolutely. And for this to happen at this time, I feel like it's, it's amazing. I love it. It's yeah. poetic. I love it. But you as the face of this, has there been any vitriol, negative energy around this release towards you or towards the film? Maybe not towards you, but towards yeah. the film? I think when you're taking big swings and doing things that can be meaningful, you always run the risk of people having yeah. some sort of negative reaction to it. This source material, the thing that we're dealing with here is something that people take very seriously and hold very close to them. It's how they live their lives, it's what they have faith in, it's what they believe in, it's the ultimate answer to the proverbial questions. So there's no surprise that some people might have seen the premise and thought, oh, this is gonna be something negative, this is bad, this is witchcraft, stay away from that. But what we wanna challenge audiences to do they step outside of their comfort zone to, to understand the context of the story and realize that it's not really a critique on the religion. It doesn't really dabble in the religion in depth. Really what it is is just a story about a man. You will not leave this film not feeling inspired. Um, it's much deeply more layered than it is a sort of commentary on religious belief or any kind of thing like that. It's like this is a... This is a film kind of for everybody. You know, it got action in it, romance. It got, you know, uh, sentimental moments. It's got funny moments. It has a little bit of everything in there for you. And it also has a spiritual aspect that's really important today for people to realize. At the end of the day, we're saying is knowledge is stronger than belief. Everybody got a belief, a position, a political stance, everything that they, you know, sort of a, per a perception about the world. This movie is about perspective, which is saying that, you know, your viewpoint is your tiny viewpoint unless it is expanded enough for you to see all different angles mm -hmm. or at least try to consider more angles than you did previously. And that's what we're saying in this. Knowledge is stronger than belief. Knowing where you're going, knowing who you are, being situated in a foundation is better than being a series of beliefs. And so where we live now in the world, it's just so much information. It's good for us to realize that, like, the, the number one source of inspiration is yourself. Close your eyes, find yourself, find your footing. Then there's nowhere you can go where you ain't got the truth, mm -hmm. you know? I love that. I mm. love that. Um, the name Clarence. Um, is there a backstory on that? Because I'm not quite sure anybody was named Clarence <laughs> at that time. At that time and at that well, place in history. Well, it's his real the, name is Clarence. The the funny thing about this film is, well, first of all, I play two characters. One is Clarence. One is Thomas. So on certain days I would come and I would play Clarence. Certain days I come and play wow. Thomas. Some days I would come and play Clarence Thomas. You'll find in the movie there are many multi layered metaphors mm. that appeal to today, that appeal to days of the past, that appeal to the in between. It's kind of funny that it's so timely. It's funny and tragic that you know some of the themes that we talk about are some of the themes that, you know, world events that are now taking place, like the conflicts over East um, in the Middle East, were not happening when we were writing and making this. But when we came out with this movie, it was like, damn, it's right in line with what is going on. It's kind of mm. funny how it just, like, imitated and kind of unfortunate, too. But there's so many layers to this. You watch this, you're going to peep different things and be like, wait, so this is a commentary on this, 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 that. Mm, that's, it's it's got a lot it's going lame. on to it. That. Yeah, so it's smart. When James gave you the script, did he specifically want you to play Clarence? He was like, this is for you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So we were doing The Heart of Day Fall, and, uh, you know, I had, you know, sometimes I get phone calls from home and I get nervous because I don't really know what's going on. And, you know, sometimes it'd be, uh, you know, news I don't really want to hear. Right, right, Somebody right. got into something. And I'm pretty much the person in my family that kind of works out all the issues and kind of brings everybody together to glue. So when they call me, I'm, like, nervous at first to see, like, what's going on? And it was my cousin. He had got into something. And so, you know, I'm on, I'm on FaceTime with, with James. I'm like, yo, I got to hit you back. My, my cousin hit me. And then so I got to get off the phone with him, and I just, like, briefly explained to him what the situation is. He's like, you Clarence. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, because he hadn't seen that side of me yet. Right, he had right, just right. seen me, like, you know. And, but then when he saw that, he was like, you're Clarence. And I was like, what, what? You know, I didn't understand what he was talking about. And then later, when I read the script, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, this is this the role I've been waiting for. You feel wow. me? So. So, fire. so yeah. It's are you fun. are you having fun still? I mean, this has been you've had a crazy several year run. I mean, yeah. to be totally honest with you, Lakeith, like there aren't that many new actors that we're that familiar with. You know what I mean? Like we've kind of I don't know if the way media has changed, you know, and and the way we consume a film is different. And I know there are still new stars, but like for me, up until like a few months ago, I wouldn't have been able to recognize Timothy Chalamet if he walked down the street. Mm -hmm. 
But we recognize Lakeith Stanfield, you know what I mean? You've been in yeah. so many different things that have had impact. Um, how do you look at your career thus far, and are you still enjoying all the projects that you do? Um, I, it's kind of hard for me to have perspective to know where, you know, in, in my career trajectory I might find myself, but I know one thing's for sure. I've grown a lot. And um, I think my ideas about it were a little bit grander than it actually really is. You know, I look at it more now as a, as a job, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Whereas, whereas before it was kind of like the, my, my whole world was like, I want to be an actor. And now I kind of look at it as a job and I find ways to have fun. But really, you know, where I get my real uh, feeling of accomplishment is being able to touch people from different backgrounds who don't look nothing like me, who ain't been through what I've been through. Um, that can be touched and moved by the stories that have universal appeal. It's like old ladies, old white women coming up being like, oh, I feel you and get out, you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm able to connect and communicate and commune with my people, with my world. And that is a dream and a gift that's bigger than anything I could ask for. You know, there's a lot of things that come with it that are not fun. But, you know, that's any job. So, you know, I just... I take the things that I don't like and I try to, you know, have an optimistic view, continue to push forward and provide for my family. So that's what it's about. You said the thing earlier about like when things happen in your family, you're the guy people call. Obviously, you're very successful. And often that person is in a role of responsibility in a family. Yeah. yeah personality wise, is that very you? Or if like if you weren't that guy, if you weren't as successful as you've been and would you still want to have that responsibility or do you think you'd be more of the background guy in your family who maybe doesn't have to deal with everyone's stuff? I think oftentimes when you step into them positions in family and life, it's less a choice and more like a feeling of obligation. I can't sit by and watch bad things happen to people. I don't just sit back and be like, that's cool, I'm cool with that. You gotta move on it, even if I feel you know, I felt fear, you know, felt like I didn't want to step in. I didn't want to do nothing at that time. But the point was, like, move anyway, do something. Don't be tacit and, and allow things to happen to people you love. So, you know, I just always have been that person. I didn't really have a choice. You know, what you hope to experience as a result of that is reciprocal behavior. Like, you know, you give something, you give, you give, you give. You got to be around those who also give. Otherwise, you're just giving and you get mm -hmm. tapped out. So it's all about you know, re recalibrating the team, recalibrating the people around you, expressing what you need and, and feel. Because mm. a lot of times we feel like we can't say nothing. That hurt my feelings. So wait, let me stop. That hurt my feelings. Can we readdress that? If you care about my feelings, we can have a conversation. If you don't, we can't. So now I know where I need to go. Mm. Right. So it's just all about communication, and that is key. And I feel like with that, you could do so many things, which is why I like to do projects that spark communication and dialogue amongst people. It's like, what? were the Jews black? Was this, this, that? Was this, this, that? What is the question? The answer is less important than the conversation. Right, that people have. And that's what I want uh, people to do when they see my, when they see my work. What so. can you say about, about James Samuel, who is a name that over the last few years people have been getting familiar with? It's, it seems like he sort of popped up on the scene out and he's one of those it was like an overnight success 20 years in the making you know what and, i mean and, and, and yeah. just a side note we're biased we love him he's yeah, a yeah, personal yeah. friend of mine so so yeah, ebro's yeah. friend if you, ebro's friend some, was so if you say if you say something shady you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> but i just no. find him such to be, to be such a charming interesting dude absolutely um yeah what can you say about him what's he like to work with i'm sure his pep talks on set oh, must listen. be <laughs> best I mean, pep talkers. Oh, no, yeah, it has yeah. to be crazy. I mean, the energy is unmatched with anybody I've ever come into contact with in the space uh, where, you know, we've been creative and specifically super, you know, black and energetic. And he only refers to you as God, you know what I mean? It's oh, like the black everybody. God. Here you are. And he's just got this, like, energy that fills up the room. It's really exciting. And you can see when you meet him how he comes up with his intricate ideas. He's an imagination-driven person. His... What he likes to say is obey your crazy. You know, he's got these crazy ideas and he obeys them. And he's crazy enough to think he can manifest what used to be an idea into a tangible film where we're all able to engage in communion together. On both The Harder They Fall and on The Book of Clarence, we had these like giant dance, you know, these, he's has giant speakers and they just play music. He bumping Jay and all of a sudden he start dancing and he starts to train and everybody on the, on the set is dancing and it's like this big, form of communion in robes and black skin and I just felt like it was just this beautiful like divine sort of energy so Hallelujah Heaven being a, a song on the soundtrack you know Lil Wayne and Bucci Bantan and um, and Shaba and, Shaba and yeah. many others. It's just a beautiful compliment to the overall energy that was brought along in this. It was a spiritual movement and it was led by James and so you know ain't nobody like him. 
It's great. Now, uh, you've also been close to the to the comedic and just genius of Jordan Peele. Mm-hmm. And working with you. Talk about that. Wait, because, and Donald Glover. And Donald oh, yeah, Glover. <laughs> the and, different yo. geniuses you've gotten to collab with is yeah. crazy. Well, well uh, let's start with Jordan and, and working on the movies you, I mean, you guys have made classics at this point. Yeah, well, I've been quite, quite fortunate to just work with like really uh, talented individuals. And the, the interesting thing about it is they all come in so many different packages. Uh, Jordan is uh, the most, probably one of the most unassuming people you'd think that have uh, just this very vast, great, big, unendless imagination. He's very soft-spoken, doesn't say much. Um, you could miss him in the room if you, uh, if you weren't paying attention, but has just such a unique perspective. And for Get Out in particular, it was good because he's both, you know, he's mixed, he's white and black. And so that's a perspective that you don't dive into much really in the in you know popular art and you don't really get to see what that perspective looked like typically if you're mixed you take one side or the other and it, it depends on uh how you're presenting in the world which side you sort of tend to lean more into so therefore you take on those characteristics and you profess those kind of perspectives generally but in get out really he had this unique perspective where it was like i'm both so i get like both sides of how this looks, how this feels, what the ambitions are. And so I was able to incorporate those. And I actually, it was quite uh, eye-opening to, to walk that path with him. Because I was like, I had one idea about it. But then he, you know, added, you know, more textures to it. And I was able to see it from a different perspective. And he's also so funny. And I don't think people realize funny people are funny because they're smart. And it's because they're also brazen. Intelligence and brazenness mixed together with a, sort of a cynical outlook, which accompanies intelligence, is how you get uh, comedians. You know, you're never going to get a funny comedian who's glib, who doesn't like, you know, have a sharp sense of the world. So it was dope to work with him because you were sort of getting all this different game. And then you also got a unique perspective for the particular subject matter we were dealing with. So it was it was awesome, man. And it's, it's cool to have somebody him, like him in your pocket where you could just hit him and be like, yo, I got this idea. And he's just like, yeah, that's, that's dope or that's crazy. Like, you know, so. Yeah, that's one of the great minds of our time to be able to hit on the jack. Like, yo, I was thinking about X, Y, and Z. By the way, you should give yourself credit too. And I know you just—it's a—it's a thing people just say that you're fortunate to have worked with. But like, you're it's also—it's not you're coincidental. Good at your job. It's not coincidental <laughs> right, right. that they've all reached you're out. You're kind of good at your that's job. That's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to say about the things you've done. It's like it's not coincidental. People keep using you for these meaningful projects. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you, man. So, thank you. Well, so what, what's Donald like then in that? Space because Donald yeah. Donald's very different in terms of his he's not like James mm-hmm. he's also very inspirational and he's also very brilliant but I'm sure his approach is different on set. Well, I think Donald is. I think the thing that kind of drives him is like I'm better than what y'all think I am. You know what I mean? I feel like for a while he probably felt like you know you know during maybe commu- maybe his college years or something that he wasn't really able to say how G he was you know it was so many different ideas that you know and things that was going on around it's hard, kind of hard from a certain platform to let your light shine and for people to know just what you got and I think he was sort of frustrated by that, and that frustration drove him to make better, bigger and better things and finally, when he came out, he's like, nah, this is what y'all think I can do." This is what I can really do. And I think that kind of like underdog feeling really drove him to be the person that we know today, like this big, massive person. And sometimes when people underestimate you, it's a perfect platform, a perfect environment for you to really blossom. It's like, I want you to hate because I got so many things that you can't see and can't know that are yet to be born. And I think that when they finally came out, he came out hard and continues to kind of go that way. You ever see, I don't know if you've ever seen it, he did a freestyle on my show like... 10 years ago oh, yeah. and he didn't tell me what he was doing he said I just want to come up there and I was like alright of course and he came up there and he had this prepared rap the joint has like 20 million views now on YouTube mm-hmm. and it's very much what you're saying like he had this moment that he did not hit me to before yeah. of like I'm going to show the fuck out today like people <laughs> yeah. are going to see me and if you watch what he does he did it on the grind my whole life instrumental it was his moment to be like people think I'm like a nerd rapper they don't know I can spit mm-hmm. I'm a real musician and he, yeah. when he shows you, he, and then he did it with the singing too. When yeah, he started absolutely. singing, I was right. like, oh, Donald's singing. He played me sober. I was like, oh, he sings. That's neat. And it's, then you're like, oh, he can sing, sing. Oh, he can, <laughs> and by the way, make great songs. Great songs. Look, all the nerds, all the people that, you know, people think are the ones that are the father for the picking on, the people that's just like, oh, you ain't, you know, you ain't, those are the ones that be running the world. 
You know, if you probably saw Elon Musk in high school, you would probably be like, you know, who is this guy? Just walking past him. And then, you know, he's able to amass this massive success. It's not always the case, but it's important to treat people how you would like to be treated and to reflect the inside on the outside. It's very simple. If we can do that, then, you know, we make room for everybody to be able to, to thrive. And then people, when they get up, they don't forget about you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... You know, it's the golden rule. We enact the golden rule, and then everything will be cool. It's so and simple, but it's true. Especially, like, for black men, it's important for us to, like, you know, stick together in order for us to, to meet each other where we at, just as humans. You know, we got enough things in the world that's trying to tell us who we are, who we should be, and, and try to fit us into these ever-smaller categorical imperatives. It's important for us to free them chains up and be like, yo, you good to be you. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you you, because that allowed me to be me. You know? McKee stands for this. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, he is Clarence in the book of Clarence out this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes he's Thomas. The 12th. Sometimes he's Clarence Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yo, give it up, man. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming yeah. by the program. Thank you, Appreciate you. Yeah, man.